Hey everybody, I'm going to do a question of the month. And before I get started, uh, I want to make sure all of you know that I've got some great online courses and workshops coming out on yoganatomy.com. Uh, if you're not already, go over to yoganatomy.com and get signed up on the newsletter so that you hear about it. Uh, the first question comes from Shirley, and her question is about frozen shoulder. She says, I have a student with right frozen shoulder. What poses or stretching would I recommend? Um, well, as usual, it's more complicated than we want it to be. Um, and frozen shoulder is one of those things um, that depending on the phase or stage of frozen shoulder that uh, the student is in, you might do different things or might things uh, or different things might be acceptable at different times. So first is make sure you have a good assessment and that you know the assessment reveals, that it is a frozen shoulder. Uh, there are occasions where a torn rotator cuff uh, could sort of create similar symptoms. Um, the, the differentiator in a very simplistic form is, um, you know, in a torn rotator cuff, passively being moved is usually not painful, whereas in a frozen shoulder, even somebody else moving your arm for you is often painful. So that's one, one test. So um, make sure it's assessed correctly. Uh, assuming it is a frozen shoulder, uh, the frozen shoulders, they're, they're often um, going to happen in three phases. One is uh, the freezing phase, the frozen phase, and then the thawing phase. Um, when it's in that freezing phase and it's starting to tighten and the pain is starting to increase, the last thing you want to do, well, the last thing you want to do in any of those phases is increase um, the pain, especially after doing any movement. And that is your fundamental basic test for any um, posture that you're considering having the student do, or if you are somebody with frozen shoulder that you're thinking of doing. You always want to um, test out one thing and then see how your body reacts to it. So it's no different here. That, that's true of any injury and any modification that you're thinking uh, might be appropriate. So having said that, um, in the freezing stage, um, smaller movements, I would suggest probably not weight-bearing. Uh, that, that might be true of freezing and frozen itself. Um, it's better to do things like arm hanging or maybe just barely playing with, with the edges of range of motion. Once again, we're not wanting to push it so far that the body responds by tightening or creating more pain following that activity. That could be anywhere from immediately after to 24 hours later. Now in the thawing stage, there's a little bit more freedom and the range of motion is typically starting to increase again. And so pushing it a little bit further, playing with that edge a little bit more um, is gonna be more appropriate. So I don't have any specific um, posture that somebody should do or should not do. It's, it's going to typically be modifying the existing ones either you know, if it's warrior, maybe the arm can't go up all the way. Maybe the arm has to sit lower, you know, or the hand goes on the waist or, you know, you can feel free to make it up. It's just make sure you're coming from the, from the uh, perspective of you're testing to see if this is okay. All right. Um, there is also an article on the website that was written by a friend named Mike Monroe, who's a physical therapist. And he wrote specifically, I, I don't recall him giving any specific postures that you should or shouldn't do because that should be done on a case-by-case -case basis anyway. Um, but check out that article. You can always go to the search bar on the articles page and type in frozen shoulder and you'll find that article. All right, Shirley, I hope that helped.